Nobody's listening, right? Hi, Andy. Hey. <laughs> so fun. What are we doing here? Oh, yeah, we're going to talk for an hour, so no one's listening. As we do, I am dying to know, though, or is there anyone out there listening? Yeah, this is from Starshine on Apple Podcasts. Oh. I am listening. <gasps> Love that. Found you randomly through looking at the Apple Top Podcast list. Oh. I've been going through the older episodes, and I have two questions. One, is Elizabeth still getting Botox? Oh, boy. And two... <laughs> Where did your cabin Instagram go? Oh, okay. Two okay. great questions. Fantastic questions. Um, first of all, I love those Apple Podcasts reviews that mm. come in because those are the ones I really get to on a on a you know. Those are the ones you know daily. how to find. <laughs> those are the ones I know how to get to. So thank you for that. It's great. So to answer questions, one, no, I have not gotten Botox again, but. Like, this isn't the financial season for us for me to be getting things like Botox. Oh. Or, like, we need a new microphone stand, which are very expensive, which we're going to get, you know, at some point. But as soon as that cash flow, as they say on Shark Tank, picks up. Yeah. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you see the mic stand and you're like, those aren't expensive. We, we realize might. this one's kind of a piece of shit, but we just need we need a better one because it keeps falling on Elizabeth. If anyone wants to join Patreon, it's <laughs> patreon.com slash nobody's listening, right? And I want to shout out, we have a new Are You There Eckhart member on Patreon. Are you for real? Yes. So thank Damn. you so much. You know who you are. Wow, well, um, thank you. Wanted to shout out our sponsor for this week's episode. Thanks to Dipsy for supporting Nobody's Listening, right? Dipsy is an app that has over 1,000 spicy audiobooks. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Discover stories about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. Get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash NLR. That's dipsystories.com slash NLR. Anyway, Botox. Now, I have been researching where I do most of my scientific research, which is Reddit. Yeah. So last time I didn't like the feeling of Botox because it made my forehead feel like frozen, you know, and that's kind of the whole <laughs> the whole game of it. But I do want to get it kind of around my like corner of my eyes, lower eyes. And apparently there's something where you can do just underneath like your eyebrow situation. So it kind of just targets the places you want it. You don't have to get it all over. But then don't you lose expression of the eyebrows? Aren't the, ex the eyebrows kind of key to our facial expressions? I think for some people. Gotcha. Um, for me. <laughs> oh, wait. You just had a cool pop on one. Well, yeah. I can only do that on one side. I can't even control it. You can't all. do one. Nope. One raised brow? Like, you don't want to... You're looking sinister. Am I doing it now? Or, like, suspicious? Am I doing it now? No, but you you kind of are kidding. I just tilt my head. I can't yeah. do it. I can't do it. Well, yeah, I can't do it on the other brow. You sure can do it on the other, though. I know. Scary. <laughs> like you're in trouble. Yes. You're or you know something. Yes. Anyway, I can't wait to go in and get some shots of that poison into my face mm -hmm. to keep... The line, just a little, you know, just a dabble do you keep the lines at bay a little longer. How much does a dabble do you cost? A couple hundred bucks. It's nothing insane. What a racket. <laughs> well, the whole thing is a racket. You know, I really struggle with this. The, <sighs> But I'm, I feel like I'm coming to a place of um, calm around all of it. But the need to change and, our, and fix ourselves, and I feel like lately the latest fixation is not looking old. Like, you know, for a long time it was like, get as skinny as you can. And now I think the fixation is like, have no wrinkles or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving certain, there was an interview with Kate Winslet recently that was like embracing aging and yeah. like, let's see an aged face for the beautiful thing it is. Yeah. 
So I always am really torn about doing these sorts sure. of things. It is wild how much younger we as a people look like in film compared to the actors, you know, of your. Well, yeah. We I mean. We just watched Miss, uh, we would. Beetlejuice. No. Yes, but no. We just watched Karate Kid. I watched Karate Kid, oh, yeah. the original. Mr. Miyagi in it. Uh, Pat Morita, the actor. Guess how old he was when they taped Karate Kid. Do you, I mean, you can picture Mr. Miyagi, right? Yeah. Guess um, how old he was. Well, now that you're, I that's have fine. context. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. 45. Uh, he was older than that. Well, I actually don't remember very clearly what he looks. I actually haven't seen Karate Kid. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I Are you serious? Yeah. I can picture the kid because there is a lot of media around it. I never saw Karate Kid. One, I never saw Karate Kid. Two, I'm assuming there's a three. I mean, there, it's a whole franchise. They're making a new one now, but they made the one, they made, they were, I think there was one, two, three, then they went back and started with Jaden Smith got a reboot right. in like 2011. I heard then about that. Cobra Kai, the series that our good friend writes on. Yeah. I would have watched Cobra Kai, except I hadn't watched Karate Kid. <laughs> there <laughs> is. Karate. I mean, it was a phenomenon when it came out, I know. obviously. I'll tell you something else that's going to blow your mind. Okay. I never watched Fast and Furious. I never watched Too Fast, Too Furious. Okay. I that's never not. Watched. That's not. <laughs> in the same ballpark as Karate Kid. I know, Kid I know, I know. At all. I know. There is a moment in Karate Kid, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of the best scenes of all time that when it popped up, I was like, I can't wait for the kids to see this. And it's almost at a part of it where the, if you're a kid watching it, you are kind of like, what the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of stuff comes together instantly and to see our kids, it blows their mind. Oh, that's cool. And I think Teddy was like, this is the best movie ever. It is so rad. Oh, I should watch it. You got to see Karate <laughs> Kid at some point. Okay. Are there any other big movies like that from oh, the 80s I'm that you didn't sure, see? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Did you see Gremlins? Yes. Yes. Did you? I did. Yeah. Okay. Where were we going? Oh, Botox. How did we get there? Oh, people They're looking people older. young. Anyways, well, Mr. Someone, Miyagi was like 51 or something. Someone posted a Golden Girls clip recently. Which, oh, those ages will blow your mind. Well, I know that like Sophia intentionally. Um, she was the youngest one. Like, let's Rue McClanahan. So Rue McClanahan at the start of the series yeah. was six years older than me. And which one was Rue McClanahan? Blanche. That's pretty shocking. Yeah. We all just, and also I think, I do think living in LA and the way people act and dress and but there's been it's different. But there's a marked change, I think. Marked. Marked? Oh, I wasn't correcting you. I was just like hype manning you. But it sounded like you corrected me. <laughs> I, I wasn't. But you said it different than me. Yeah, because I'm like emphasizing it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Market. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> it's, I think, I think we look younger than those people did. I would agree. So anyway, I, to answer, oh, should we answer the cabin question? Yeah. Why'd you give up on the Instagram? <laughs> okay. So cabin <laughs> Instagram. First of all, I want everyone to know that. Did you like unlist it or make it private? Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> Well, I want everyone to know this. This is hilarious, but uh, this is so me. Mm. <laughs> you know, I set out to do something <laughs> and I go 100 miles per hour. Wow, you always give me shit about this kind of thing. I know. I recently found a notebook that was dedicated to when I started the cabin Instagram, I was seriously, oh, this is funny because we were hanging out with people last night that I feel like we had spent an entire dinner talking about this idea that I wanted to start a business wow. around cabins and like selling cabin products and like really curating the good stuff mm -hmm. and maybe even, you know, accruing cabinet cabins, cabinets to Airbnb. And I had, I mean, I went, I thought so much about this and I don't even want to say the business name because I really thought long and hard about it, but I was going to start an Instagram. Oh, Cozy Cabins. 
No, that <laughs> surely exists. Mine was more like elevated. No, I know. That's why I was joking. And that is kind of what my aesthetic would be. I mean, I guess it would be kind of like Ralph Lauren meets... Um, and our couch is Ralph Lauren fabric. You oh, know okay, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you confused me for a minute, but okay. It's cabin obviously. Like, we're seeing plaid. We're seeing cozy. We're mm-hmm. seeing wood. But it's not kitschy, like... Um, as you like to say, country kitchen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Anyway, I don't, like, now that I'm talking about it, I'm like, should I do this? I know, I could, I I literally was just going to (laughs) say, I bet we could hype you up to, like, restart it right now because you, I saw the wheels turning. But you torched it because you just lost the passion for the photos of it. I lost it. Well, what happened was we bought a cabin that... I was really jazzed about, and we thought, oh, we'll have to put, like, 15 grand into this to, like, pull up some carpeting and make it livable. And it turns out we had to gut this thing, and we put so much into it, and it is so beautiful. I have to say I'm really proud of it, but the work of it killed, like, snuffed that flame a bit. It was... I was like, oh, this is what it takes. And what you don't realize, I mean, we had an amazing contractor for many years. But there's like one guy up there who can do the job. Mm -hmm. You have to wait a long ass time. It takes a long time. Like, it's not like these city slickers who think, oh, I'm going to redo my house. And you have a team there working. It, It just, it's a drawn out process and things happen and things have gone wrong left and right and front and down and center and all around. So my dreams of like buying cabins and renting them out definitely are gone. But the curating things kind of sounds fun. Well, it's funny. I think this might be the first time potentially on this podcast you've even revealed that part of the dream of it all. Uh Because I think you're like, let me first start with this cabin and this Instagram Right. But so that's a little inside peek of you you were thinking even bigger. Yes. Well, that was another thing is I wasn't very good at the cabin Instagram. Like I didn't keep up with it very much because you couldn't take pictures of the progress as quickly as you thought. Yes. It would be like it took months and months and months. And here are new pipes that went in, you know. Yeah. Here's our dug up yard because we thought this pipe was broken, but it turns out it was the one way, way over there. Right. <laughs> things like that. Yeah. You know. Anyway, thank you for asking that. And thanks for finding us. And if you're also new listening to this, I hope the person that found us is, will make it to this episode. <sighs> you know, that's a long answer. haul. That's a long haul. Yeah. But if also, if you're new, thanks for finding us. That's great. Okay. My whole thing about like changing myself and. What a journey I've been on. And I I think I came to this earth kind of on a certain side of things. I don't – It's this is ironic because I'm wearing a very bold lip today. And, like, growing up, I would get into big fights with my mom because she wanted me to wear lipstick. Mm-hmm. And I refused. And I would be like, you're so – I hate I hate thinking about – times that I wasn't nice to my mom because she was so awesome. But I would be like, you're so shallow. Like, you know, for people to just care about how people look look instead of what's really matters is so shallow, blah, blah, blah. What really matters? Well, okay, here's the thing that I'm learning. Looks. <laughs> <laughs> how you look to people. It all comes for, full circle. It's not about necessarily how you look. And sometimes I think that putting energy, money, time is like frivolity, frivolity, whatever. For example, Botox. And I also go to, it's the patriarchy telling us we have to be little tiny girls and have no pubic hair and have no body fat and but you should have boobs, but, you know, you shouldn't have this and you shouldn't have that. You shouldn't have wrinkles. You shouldn't have gray hair. But you should – it's like – and you have to spend $100 to get your nails done and the pink tax, they call it, mm. which is also annoying. <laughs> I'll get into that they even call it the pink tax. But you got to have the boobs. You got to have the boobs. You got to have the boobs. So anyway <laughs> – 
I have struggled with this. Ah. And I also, being the mother of a daughter, I don't certain. And I look at her, and she is so exquisite, perfect. And my mom used to look at me and say that I was so beautiful and exquisite. And I don't, I would never want her to feel in any way like she needed to change something about herself. Yeah. However, there is also the factor of life is short and you should feel good about yourself and like have pleasure in how you feel. Mm -hmm. And I actually was just talking to a group of friends about lingerie. Mm -hmm. I, you know, have like one thing of lingerie maybe that I've pulled out once in a decade, maybe. I didn't know, like, people are wearing lingerie all the time. Yeah. It's like a big thing. Sure. But to me, that is like ridiculous. It's like this absurdity thing that I almost... The one time I wore it was to be, like, funny almost or something, like, funny sexy. What? That was funny sexy? No, I don't know. But it was it was random. You have to admit, it was, like, a weird thing for me. I probably was cleaning up my drawer and was like, oh, this thing. The last time I can remember you put on fancy lingerie was my birthday. That doesn't seem random at all. Oh, it's not random then. Okay, then it was a birthday present. That was just supposed to be funny? No, no, no. I forgot it was your birthday. Okay. Calm down. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Look how offended you are. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't it's remember. My birthday. Okay, well, anyway. Yeah. But they're like, in my mind, that's something I'd wear for you. And they're like, no, we wear it for us. So they can look sexy to and themselves. And feel sexy. Yeah. And that's what, like, getting Botox is about. And that's what people getting, you know, augmentations and stuff like that. It's for them. Mm-hmm. Now, do you dig deeper and go, okay, well, but is this really for, like, society or men's gaze or whatever it is? Yeah. It doesn't necessarily matter. You know, I think I'm getting over the hump of midlife and I'm like, I want to have pleasure mm-hmm. and I want to allow myself that. And it might take kind of a bit of a mind shift, but do, do you do what you want to do? I hear that. Like you, it's sad that like you're thinking I just have to put on this fancy lingerie for my birthday when you should be doing it all the time for you, not just for my birthday, but yeah. all the, all the time for you <laughs> okay. to make you feel Andy, better. Do you know what down. I mean? Like that, <laughs> It's sad. It's not for me. I mean, I guess that was my birthday, but it's not for me. You're doing yourself a disservice by not wearing it when you want to to feel good about you. Okay. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay, anyway. I know what I'm getting you for your birthday now. I guess so. Although, can I be honest? hmm Here's why I don't think you will go down that road. Okay. Okay. I think it's taken you a long time to find a bra that like is truly comfortable for you. And probably the idea of now going on a journey, a very expensive journey that isn't going to be comfortable out the gate. Yeah. Probably sounds kind of daunting to you. It is an expensive journey. And are you saying that the way you just said is taking you a long time? Do you think I haven't found a bra yet? I would guess that mm-hmm. if we were playing the newlywed game and mm-hmm. this was a question, has your wife found her bra yet? <laughs> it's a pretty specific question. Okay. And oh, the newlywed game, you just have to write it down. I want there to be multiple choice in this particular one. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. Not quite. Uh-huh. <laughs> right? But and what, no. makes, what makes you say that? Because I feel like you've... you. Maybe about every five years, you're kind of like, you well, things you go back change. into the journey, but you go, you re-enter the journey and are like, is there a better situation well, out there for me? That's the problem is, you know, as you know, I like learned that my sizing was way off recently, thanks to my scientific go-to Reddit. Mm-hmm. But so all bras are different. Yeah, so am it's... I supposed to spend $17,000 trying every bra out there in size 32E or whatever? I think that's my size. You know, I don't, I can't do it. Yeah. So you're probably right. And even if I have found my perfect bra, I don't know it's my perfect bra yet because I haven't tried all the other bras. 
I'm always wondering, is mm. there a better one? That's but yeah, interesting. So lingerie, makeup, clothing, these things that people and, you know, Botox, skin mm -hmm. stuff, getting facials, things that people do to make themselves feel good or feminine or not feminine, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like it is a discomfort for me to allow myself to actively seek pleasure of how I feel about my outward appearance. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, I will get Botox, but there's a little bit of shame attached to it to me. Oh, yeah, sure. I see what you're saying. Lingerie. I'm like, let's say, you know, we get 17 new Are You There Eckhart members on Patreon, and mm -hmm. we have a little bit more money to play with. Mm -hmm. Am I going and buying, like, I think it would take a lot for me to be find the thing that makes me feel good, but maybe not. I don't but, know. But that the lingerie one that might just not be one that you value, right? And it's almost like if you did start valuing it, are you only valuing it because your friends gave you the reason well, to value it? Well, I'm curious it? about it. I have to say, all of my friends in this conversation, it was a group of women, mm -hmm. were shocked, and they were like. You know, you and I aim to have sex once a week. And which, by the way, everyone was pretty impressed by. <laughs> and they don't think I had it in me? <laughs> no, for me. But oh, okay. They Are were, you sure? Yes. All right. Cause I don't want you're them very thinking. Virile. I mean, trust me, they know you have like a, you know, <laughs> you like, you want it. Anyway, so... I want some more <laughs> of it. I like it. I love it. Okay. So anyway, but they were like, then what are you doing? And I was like, I'm naked. And they were like, you're just raw dogging. <laughs> they, they no, said, they didn't say that. Yes, they did. Okay. I know that. I have no, so they're joking. I mean, questions, Andy. Though. They're not getting naked? I'm sure eventually they are, but I think like... I don't actually know. I need to find out more Oh, details. they're doing like a dance beforehand or something? <laughs> a mating know. dance? I don't know. Are we not doing mating dances and we should be doing mating dances? I don't need any dancing from you. Just no offense, but I don't. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Andy. Uh, wow. <laughs> anyway, we let's move on. can't elaborate on I, that at all? I honestly was like, I want to have an episode where we're not talking about like poop or sex or whatever. And of course I brought us here. I'm sorry. This just happened. So. I think you might be lactose intolerant. <laughs> I don't want to tell. <laughs> please. I think you might need to okay, take please. a look in the mirror. <laughs> please it save it. It might be time to admit you're lactose intolerant. Okay, let's save it for <laughs> let's save it for another episode. You might be right. <laughs> and oh god, that's so upsetting. First of all, I wanted to give a shout out to this week's sponsor, Dipsy. So calling all romance lovers, if you read Fifty Shades of Grey, if you love those kind of spicy beach reads, or if you read The Spanish Love Deception, I have the perfect app for you. This is Dipsy. is created by women for women. And whether you're looking for a rugged cowboy or a Scottish sailor, gods of the underworld, or even, you know, my favorite kind of a professor... Uh, graduate student situation, you'll find characters you love on Dipsy. New chapters are released every week, so you always find something new to enjoy. And I do have to say, the quality of Dipsy is astronomical out of this world. Their actors are incredible. The characters are so well-developed. The stories are engaging. So for our listeners of our show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash NLR. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash NLR. That's dipsystories.com slash NLR. Okay, I have a question for you. Okay. I feel like you wanted to talk about this with me in the moment, but you couldn't for obvious reasons. We went to a high school football game, right? Mm -hmm. um, our nephew was in. Very fun. So fun to be at a nighttime, nighttime high game. school game. Now, the other team yeah. had a, I'm not even going to call it a Spirit cheer squad. 
There you go. I was going to say, I'm not even going to say cheerleaders because they were calling it a spirit squad. Yeah. And I could tell you had notes. Yeah. Because you were a captain for two years straight. Yeah. And there was one thing that was so striking about the whole spirit <laughs> squad to me. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> that I have questions for you. Should I kick it off or do you want to give your notes first? Well, I think you should just say the like very <laughs> blazing interesting thing okay i think this is my thing yeah the boxes yeah okay so there's typical if you imagine yourself at a smaller school football game there's some bleachers but not big maybe six bleachers tall Mm -hmm. so not that crazy in size yeah and the cheerleaders are in front of the bleachers that makes sense they're in front of the crowd but there were boxes that they would stand on To be higher up off the air. The boxes were probably two feet tall, would you say? Such an interesting thing. So if they got on the boxes, Mm -hmm. their heads were like almost as tall as the people sitting on level six of the bleachers, it seemed. Mm -hmm. And it seemed completely unnecessary. It also seemed like a big obscuring the vision field of the field, if you will. The field of vision for the field. If they're to get on those boxes at an inopportune time, if they're not reading the game right, Mm -hmm. you're obscuring the view for everybody. Yeah. It just seemed crazy to me, so crazy that I don't know if you noticed, a lot of people weren't sitting in those particular bleachers. They were sitting elsewhere. Well, listen. Read the room. There's a lot going on here. I don't mean to disparage these young women who did a great job as a spirit squad. And Nothing they did against a, them. Yes. This was all the the well, head I'm, of the, the coach, I'm guessing, the spirit I'm, coach. Yes, and I'm I'm going to have notes for the coach. But right. uh, also a big difference between where we went to high school in St. Louis, I think there is a much – a lot more fervor for football. I want to qualify what you're saying, though. Whatever. Football is big in LA. There's different leagues. Okay, maybe football is big, but our, like, this field was very, like, it was a sweet kind of hometown feeling field. It it had, it didn't have, like, the bleachers at our football field in St. Louis were massive. It was like a legit operation. These were bleachers was, you could move. There was a lot of room for us on on a, like, fresh new impressive track that was went around the football Mm -hmm. field for us cheerleaders to do our thing it was like bouncy you know that track feeling Mm -hmm. we just had a lot more infrastructure to begin with okay now we were a cheerleading team so different from a spirit squad a higher bar would you say that yes and i i was captain for two years in a row i i would say up until about 15 years ago, still had nightmares about telling my dance teacher that I was stopping dance to pursue cheerleading. <laughs> but it, it took so much bandwidth. It wasn't like you do dance and you do cheerleading. It was. Like, I think there's some people that did. Okay, sure. And I actually did too, but it was like, I'm not doing dance five nights a week now because I'm doing cheerleading. We got a new coach, I think my sophomore year. This coach had coached other cheerleading teams to win, like, the state cheerleading competitions. We had a big squad. We had varsity, junior varsity. I obviously was on varsity. And I was captain for my last two years, which was very unusual to have a junior captain. But I had a lot of You mean you were a junior in high High school, school. not junior varsity. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. I was at base. I never flew, which that's the flyers are the girls who go way up there and are thrown up and doing flips and all that stuff. Sure. Anna Marie, my sister, didn't even know like about what we were up to because she was off to college. But at this game the other night, she was like, did you guys do like, you know, pyramids and stuff? And I was like, what? <laughs> yes. We did insane shit. We were doing basket tosses. Like, the girls were going up in the air and doing stuff and mm-hmm. catching them and lots of pyramids. So the boxes were adorable, I guess. Like, kind of a 
it just was like, oh, you need to get up two feet so someone's not going to boost you up like in a. <laughs> Whoa, that's how you were looking at the box. I was like, oh, oh, honey, uh... <laughs> I'm such a dick. Anyway, they did a really fun dance routine at halftime, which like we didn't do that type of stuff. We were doing cheers. I remember our coach drilling into us like, hit it, you know, when you had to put your arms out. And I hated these drills. I was like, okay, we get it. We put our arms out in a T and we hit it. Well, watching, you know, other cheerleaders, I guess. Spirit squatters. Spirit squatters. I'm like, oh, that shit really mattered because you want uniform, like right and tight and to hit the thing and hit it and everyone look the same and be sharp. Mm -hmm. And it takes like a certain level of commitment work commitment ethic. and training, training to get there as a squad and so yeah it was you know it took me back i think we were all excited because this is the first high school game i've been to probably since high school and mm. i was so excited to see cheerleaders there and i was like i'm gonna this is gonna take me back and the truth is it just it it wasn't the same thing it's... and i sorry i just do want to say i led our cheerleading team to lead our football team to win state our senior year. And we cheered in the TWA Dome in St. Louis, and they won state championship. And so I <laughs> essentially won a football state championship. Did you hook up with any of the football players? No, I had a boyfriend. He was off at college. That was a missed opportunity. <laughs> Maybe, like, saved me from some... You know, STDs, STDs, unwanted pregnancies. Who knows? But it just, I mean, Captain the Cheerleader. I know Championship Night. That's I, bigger than prom sex. I do have to say, um, you know, I think that you imagine Captain of Cheerleading, who is also Homecoming Queen or something like that. I was a unique type of captain. I wasn't like the cutest pretty girl on the team at all. I think you're the cutest pretty girl. Thank you so much but it was really like i was a leader i was keeping people on track i was keeping morale up i had like the most heart it was a strategic choice i think by our coach and then supported by the other cheerleaders to make me i mean there were certainly many other options of like the the traditional captain of cheerleading who's like the cutest you know that wasn't me i was a base in your mm -hmm. face, and I was like, let's, you know, take our boys all the way. <laughs> we did. And yet you didn't go all the way with one of the boys. No, and we also cheered um, basketball. Whoa. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And wait, they went all the way? No, basketball didn't go all the way. Okay. Now, you seem to have <laughs> some... <laughs> Thoughts about bases versus flyers that I want to talk about. I want to explore. Well, yeah. Because I hear when I hear you say <laughs> that you're giving <laughs> reference to the flyers or something. There's something happening. Do you want to speak to that? Yes, I do. Well, this is really. I mean, it's full circle for this podcast. Talking it is, about, is it talking about the like patriarchal lens of society and how. Mm -hmm. How value is given to girls and women. It's, but it's so sad. We were in high school, you know, 15, we were children. Mm -hmm. To be little and, okay. you know, flexible and <laughs> I don't know, all of that shit. I mean, literally able to fly. I'm literally able to fly. To be thrown about. Like, your body can be thrown about whoa, and you're cool with it. Oh, whoa. You know, and... I, unfortunately, I think there were some girls on our team who, and there were like these beautiful, you know, all the girls were beautiful, of course, but there were some a lot more than some others. Some like little fairy princesses, like where you're like, how are you even real? You know? Interesting. But I think that they had eating disorders and like there was tons of toxic shit probably around that being part of their identity. And so that makes me sad. But yeah, you know. The flyers, it takes, they are being tossed in the air. They are, like, very high up there. It takes 
a certain a bravery and a trust. <laughs> it, it does for them to be just thrown about. Now the base, us bases. Yeah. We had a big responsibility. Lives on the line. Yeah. It was a huge responsibility and we took it very seriously. I mean, I never once like I I would put my life down if I thought we were about to drop someone or something, you know, that I took it so seriously that I would sacrifice myself before. Wow. But um That's some captain shit. <laughs> this captain shit. It was it was legit. So where was I going with this? Oh, I did like think I think if I could if I had my druthers back then, I would have been like maybe I had some imposter syndrome of like, oh, I'm the captain, but I'm not like I wish I were this little fairy princess flyer. Oh uh, then, okay. then the whole package would make sense. Whereas I'm like not that. I'm kind of the one who has the notebook and keeps track of schedules and makes sure that it makes sure everyone's on it and who keeps morale up. And I think I had a really good relationship with the, most of the other cheerleaders and mm, that's that probably stuff. Important. Now from the outside, I don't think it's a stretch to say that the audience, the fans, if you will, might be paying a little bit more reverence to the flyers and not understanding the value that should be given to the bases, right? How important the base is. Would you say that in the team, though, do you think the flyers understood the importance of the bases? Or did the flyers sometimes get a little drunk off their own supply of being a flyer? Like, did you guys as bases get the respect from the team? I know you probably didn't quite get as much of the respect from the fans as you should because they probably don't understand. But inside the team, how do you feel about that? Oh, yeah. I think we had really good team. You got it to go. Well, number one, you got to have that. <laughs> it's really interesting that we're talking about this because I'm like, I think in my heart I wanted to be a flyer. And I also wanted to be an actress. And then I became a writer, which feels very much like the base of the like TV industry. Sure, yeah. And it's where I'm comfortable and it's where I shine you know like i wasn't meant to be a flyer and i probably wouldn't be comfortable being a flyer i know i wouldn't be comfortable being an actor like you know what i mean mm -hmm. so so i really have my role in the world and i'm doing it i wonder what the base is of having like a cabin business <laughs> what's the base hmm do you fancy yourself a flyer or a base <laughs> in the world? Hmm. I think I'm probably a base too. Oh, look at us. Yeah. I think that's right. I work with artists. Yes, we do the work. We do and we're behind the scenes a little bit. And I don't I think that now I appreciate what that means and that's where I want to be for sure by choice. Mm -hmm. So, it's just interesting. Yeah. You're making me kind of unravel some cheerleading shit. It's about time. So before that game, we went to dinner Ugh. at a place that didn't sit well for either of us in terms of digestively, right? Did you feel bad after? No. Surprisingly, I didn't. Oh, okay. Mine, mine felt bad. I'm kind of very intrigued why you brought this up, or I'm very happy because we went to this restaurant. It seemed just like a good all-American type place, right? Yeah. But from the moment we got in there, I was worried about the quality of the food. And uh -huh. I don't – I think it happened when I got my hands on the menu. The menu was dirty sticky. feeling. Sticky. And then also and the massive. prices of the food were so expensive. And there seemed to be a divide of – how expensive this food is and how well they took care of the menu where I thought to myself, I don't trust this place. The kitchen's not good. Uh, also, the menu was so enormous, which is always kind of a a red flag to me of a place where it's like you can get basically anything your heart desires. Like you got chicken fried steak, which is 
it was a weird play. When you ordered it, Anne Marie goes, you don't hear that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> or was it country fried chicken? I don't know. Chicken fried steak. And then I got like a tostada salad <laughs> that came in. <laughs> it was so it, it, huge. But that restaurant could have been, there's another parallel universe where yes. it would have been our favorite restaurant. It's very like old school booths. You know, there could be a parallel universe, I don't but think anyway, old school is the right word. Oh, it's old school. I mean, we left, and our ten-year-old daughter said that felt like an old people's restaurant. That was because we went at five p.m. and there were tons of senior citizens. Well, there. this is why I brought this up. Mm. When we were walking into the restaurant, there was a elderly couple getting out of their vehicle that had parked in the um, handicapped parking spot in front of the restaurant. They didn't have a placard. The parking, no, they had a placard. (laughs) They sure had a placard. Don't (laughs) worry. Like they should have been there in an ambulance because they were. I saw this man so cute that he was holding the door. Would he had like a maybe a cane or a walker? But he's holding the door for it. Was adorable. So adorable, except it put the fear of fucking God in me because first of all, their parking job left a lot to be desired. It was like catty wampus and half in half out of the spot mm. then the woman who was driving was barely able to get out of the car i mean she wasn't he like went over to help her out of That's the car so sweet <laughs> she now this is unfortunate i think it's probably due to osteoporosis and it you know it's a terrible situation that is terrible Oste- yeah that's horrible I know it's horrible. What do you what you sound like this is gonna be a dig or something? Come it's on. not a dig. They were an adorable couple. Okay. I think you know where I'm going with it. <laughs> I and don't you're actually, like trying I don't to actually, like I don't. They were adorable. When we left the restaurant, they were still there eating. And like she couldn't barely hold her head up off the plate. What I'm getting at is that this woman who like cannot control her body in any way, shape, or form is out there driving a death machine. On she these... was driving the car? Yes. Oh. Yes. On these here roads out and about. Mm. And like, I don't know how she even, I think she's driving without even looking at the road. Like, how is she holding, if she can't hold her head up eating, mm-hmm. she can't get out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> like, but this is a this is a serious thing. Now, so you're saying, let's just be clear. Get them off the roads. Yes. Now I know this is a sensitive thing. Mm-hmm. We have family members who are elderly who I, you know, don't love the idea of them being out on the roads all the time. Like, but comparatively, I mean, different story from mm-hmm. what I was seeing. I know it's a sensitive issue, and I'm sure when I am of the age where my driving is like, you just can't do it. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. It's about the people whose lives you're putting in danger out there. Mm -hmm. It can be very prickly telling someone, hey, who, who, like, it's taking away your autonomy completely. Yeah, they wanted to go get their meal at their favorite diner. And it's kind of cute that they do that, but it's also like you might need to find a new way to get there. Is that is that what you're g- gently trying to say? <laughs> gently, yeah. No, I'm saying like get them the fuck off the roads <laughs> because I'm out here with my kids, <laughs> okay? okay? And it was so egregious. Okay, we I felt it. like I was getting pumped <laughs> when she was getting out the car. We get it. We get I was it. like, someone get this woman a gurney. Maybe she had hand controls on the. Um, the steering wheel. And does she have <laughs> eyeball controls? <laughs> like, is she looking? Hey, speaking of senior citizens. Yeah. Yesterday, I scared the bejesus out of an old lady and she punched me at the grocery store. Not like. <laughs> Wait, Andy, <laughs> hang on. Wait, what? Okay. So, you know how you sent me to get almond extract? <laughs> Yeah. So, so I'm at the grocery store and I come around the corner and there's like this old lady <laughs> and then maybe a 50 year old with her and they're in the spices extract. Her driver, presumably. Well, absolutely. Okay. Her driver. Okay. Helper, it turns out. Yeah, I'm guessing. Sure. Good. And they're they're in the area I need to be for a while. 
And so I kind of just giving them some space, waiting for a minute. You're and giving them the appropriate amount of time that it should take to find your spice. But as a dis- from a distance, I'm trying to clock where the almond extract is. Mm-hmm. And then I see it. And then I think, you know what? If I don't take my t- cart on this journey, I can pop in real quick and grab the extract and be on my way. Okay. But they're taking a long time. Uh-huh. So I park my cart over to the side and... I mean, right when I go, I cross in front of the old lady to come in and I say, excuse me. And right as I walk through, she she goes to reach for something, but punches me basically, right? Um, on accident. Oh, okay. But she's just going to reach. So she didn't punch me like, hey, get out of my way. It was okay. more, I'm joking when she said she okay. punched me. Okay. But it scared the bejesus out of her that I'm all Did of a sudden- Did an arm just plopped into her frame? No, my bot, it, like she goes to reach for paprika and all of a sudden she's reaching for my chest, right? Yeah. Like I pop in at the wrong moment and I'm very sweet. And I had said, excuse me, going in. But I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And I gave her like a little pat on the shoulder, but very like. <laughs> I hope know, it was gentle. It was gentle. Yeah. And then you could see the caretaker was like, uh oh, and like came over quickly because also this older person had a hard time speaking um, and communicating. So it all ended up being totally fine. What did totally the caretaker fine. say? She didn't even pay me any mind. It was more to just make sure that the old lady was okay. She was like, Mildred, is this young man bothering you? It was- Are you okay? No, no. She, I think she saw the whole thing and she knew. She probably even heard me say, excuse me, as I was coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then probably looked over and then saw and the what, lady punch me. What and did then, we learn? <laughs> um, I think you want to get into their field of vision before you cross in front of them. Mm-hmm. And- move slowly and talk louder than you might think is appropriate. That's, That's what great. I learned. That, I'm learning this lesson. Yeah. Also at the grocery store, speaking of old ladies. <laughs> I love I love our, gro- our life of grocery stores. What? I have a oh, this problem. Sounds sad. I have a new problem. Uh-oh. I wasn't at the hot deli counter the, when this happened, so I don't even know if it was just the universe making me see this interaction. Mm. I must have been near, I think there's a cherry jam. Yes. Oh, I you love know, that jam. the cherry jams oh, near so the good. hot deli sometimes? Yes. That's where it, it always. So this old lady, I see go up to the hot deli, mm-hmm. and she ordered a bunch of these chicken wings, but they're called spicy zing wings. Ooh. Hot and spicy zing wings. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why, but it stayed with me because she seemed like so hyped on them and got a lot of them. Mm-hmm. How many? Do you order um, it like by wing It's quantity? by the pound. It's okay. by the pound. Oh, and she had asked like, are these a fresh batch? Like she wanted like, is this the good stuff? Are these zing wings hot and fresh? Exactly. Okay. Now, it piqued my interest so much mm-hmm. that time that I clocked it, but I didn't, I just don't go to the hot bar. I just, that, yeah. I'm not, but then maybe a week or two weeks ago, I was in the grocery store for something and I was pulled over to that bar and I said, are those the spicy ones? I didn't say <laughs> spicy zing wings. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly didn't find out the zing until I saw the sticker on the price tag, but I got four of them. And they are the best thing I've ever had. (gasps) But I have a problem now. So when you sent me to get almond extract yesterday, I I was thinking, like, I have to get some zing wings. I just got two. I mean, they're little, but I I went over there and I I got two. And you ate them before you got home? (laughs) No, I ate them when I was home. I didn't, I wasn't. I wasn't really hiding them for you. Yeah, but you ate them in hiding. Like, you didn't didn't bring them into the house. I brought them through the house. Through? Yeah. <laughs> Where did you eat them? <laughs> I took them outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our, da- our daughter was outside, though. So I wasn't really trying to hide them. I didn't want... <laughs> I, I was sort of hiding them from you. But <laughs> You said I took them through the house. <laughs> I took them through the house. 
I didn't keep. It's not like I got out of the car and left the bag outside and then put the groceries away and then went outside. That's a little bit more like worrisome behavior. This was I brought the bag through, sort of like I wanted to get caught <laughs> so a you're, little bit. So you're six zing wings into your journey through zing wings now, and it is a problem. Well, they are. So good. There's something about them that I understand this woman, this old lady. So it's funny because yesterday I feel like I do this too where you kind of open the floodgates to be like, now I'm going all in on a new lifestyle, really. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we were going over to our dear friend's house. This is my sweet friend, Sarah, from St. Louis. Yeah. So in honor of St. Louis, I'm... I made some ooey gooey butter cake, oh, yeah. which is a St. Louis thing. Thing. It's v- a very rich kind of trashy dessert. <laughs> Turns out to be pretty ooey and pretty gooey. It's a it's a like, but there's something about it and St. Louis. Like there's that this like Midwestern. I'm going all in it. It's like yellow cake mix, yeah. and it's I don't know, and it does feel like okay like. I need a sidecar of, you know, potato skins or something. Like, if I'm Mm -hmm. going in, I'm going all in. Yeah. You knew that I was baking ooey gooey butter cake. That's why I needed the almond. Yeah. You also came home with two zingies. What's it called? Spicy zing wings. Spicy zing wings. (laughs) And you also came home with two donuts from the bakery. Now... (laughs) You can edit this out if you want to, but like, no, what? Well, <laughs> what I'm about to say, you might be like, "Oh yeah, I got to take that out." I'm just surprised because you have such a like, you will not touch a buffet. Okay. You, yeah, yeah. the zing wings alone is already like it's just employees, and they're generally trustworthy, but also they're they're busy sometimes, and they're throwing things around, and things get lost in the shuffle, and it's like prepared food that they're grabbing kind of buffet style so that's one thing but the donuts now you were in Boise recently on a grocery trip with your beautiful lovely mother whom you love and you watched her take the now your mom's 80 in her 80s and is so with it I mean that's one thing I want to say like your mom will be 115 and will be sure better at driving than that woman I saw. So, but your mom sometimes can get kind of distracted when she's talking about things or like Mm -hmm. when she's in a flow and she's very engaging to talk to. But you were at the donut case with her and you watched her take the, the little wax paper that you used to pick up the donut and she picked up her donut and then you watched her use that wax paper (laughs) (laughs) as though it were like a wet wipe. (laughs) <laughs> on the bar of the shopping cart, which is like my nightmare. <laughs> it's every germ known to humanity is on that bar of the shopping cart. And granted, you're not paying the picture right. It, she grabbed one donut and then placed that thing onto the handle and is basically wiping it all over the handle, talking to me, asking, what else, which other ones should we get? So we're in the middle. That's her pause place before <laughs> going back to get more donuts. So it's like, no, no, no. And I caught it and I made her get a new wax thing. But had you not been there, and there are many times you haven't that, that's been the there. That's the situation happening. That's what's happening. I know. I know. I know. So I think, I think the reason I got those donuts was that in spicy a, zing wing. It was a weirder, it was a gateway drug to like, <laughs> if you're brave enough to do this, yes. are you brave enough to go ask for yes. the spicy zing wing? Now, hold on. <laughs> I only get two spicy zing wings, which that's, they're not big. That's kind of weird. Okay, so. I know, but you knew that you were sneaking them. But you so, knew but so you were sneaking this them. This is what I'm thinking. If you're, I think the deli People see this all the time, that when I got two, Mm -hmm. I think in her mind, she's thinking, we're going to be seeing a lot more of that young man. Like, she knows the arc that I'm on. She knows the arc And then you go down to the donuts. And you also, I was making a delicious and pretty involved lunch of a, like, white bean, Tuscan white bean kind of spread that you put on crusty bread. Mm -hmm. And you were going to have a turkey sandwich or something. Which I did. Okay, but I also think that there was a little bit of like, 
Elizabeth's making one of her lunches. I better kind of fuel up. And that's why. No, there wasn't. Oh, okay. No, I want to be, because I knew I was going to have a turkey sandwich with that white bean thing. And I thought, oh, that's a good combo. Okay. I, it wasn't that. It was, I need to have these again. They're so fucking good. You're addicted. But yeah. what a day. You had zingers. You had two germ donuts. You had, yeah. then you were having gooey butter cake. Yeah, it's um, delicious. Just like a very kind of wholesome Midwestern day of food. I just want to, because this is the perfect segue for this, getting back to my germ and, you know, I hate the germs. <laughs> I went down this crazy Reddit thread. Uh-huh. About deli meats. Now, I struggle during the week at, can't be good. at lunches, and I wish sometimes just I had sandwich stuff, which I don't know if you've noticed. I've had it around lately. Mm-hmm. I used to go to the deli counter to get that stuff, but the deli counter always grosses me out, but I always felt there was this knowledge that you're supposed to go to the deli counter like it's fresher than getting the prepackaged meats. Now, some people are listening to this also saying, hey, we're in the middle of this horrendous like boar's head packaged meats thing where there's listeria outbreaks and oh, stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So that, I understand all that. So keep those comments to yourself with what I'm about to say though. I went down this Reddit thread. Oh my God. That was basically a deli worker claiming to be. So I don't know how true it is, but it seemed very knowledgeable. And he was saying, when it comes to, say, getting prepackaged deli meats versus at the deli counter, he was saying, get the prepackaged because the like safety slash cleanliness levels at those places Factories where it's packaged are much, much higher. And it literally is the exact same thing, whether it's cut there or cut at the deli counter. Because there's not the same oversight. Right. He said, when you go to the deli counter, there's two things happening. One is you're just putting your trust in that particular deli counter, Mm -hmm. how good they are at cleaning stuff and all that. And two, he said, deli meats, Mm -hmm. basically once they're open to air, you have about seven days, right? So he says, you don't know if you're getting meat that is here, put it in the bag. Now you got seven days or they put it in the bag and here you go. You got 30 minutes. Because some of that stuff, you know, has been open all week long. Oh, boy. And that resonated to me in such a way. But it was freeing because I said to myself, you know. Now you can buy I can go get my confidence. Applegate Farms turkey that's, you know, yeah. allegedly humanely raised. Whatever. We don't have to get into the whole uh, that side <laughs> of it all. Please not. <laughs> but but, yeah. but I it just, I, it it put me at ease a little bit. That's great. Yet the Zing Wings now are calling me and I'm trusting those. But those things are cooked to high heaven. They're just fried and, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah sure. Hopefully that's okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the deli situation, it's a bummer because I think I was in my, I was a teenager when I realized that they're not cleaning anything. Like they're putting the ham on there and slicing it. And then they're putting the Swiss on there and slicing it like in a day. I mean, I know they surely clean it. Like at the end of the day, they're getting cut. I think some places have a separate cheese one. I think the bonds we go to, I think has one that's for cheese. Yeah, I think it does. Yes. I really loved, what was that great sandwich shop in Brooklyn? Oh, yeah. You love that um, sub shop. Yes. Brooklyn Sub. Maybe. Right? Because they had a separate and they were very careful about no cross-contamination between meats and cheeses. Yeah. But sometimes you want that super thin sliced cheese. Yeah, sure. That's... I love a deli cheese. But, yeah, that's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah. Great. Well, I do want to try to have an episode Mm-hmm. Where we don't talk about sex. <laughs> we don't talk about poop. We didn't talk about poop today. Those are like the main two. Well, you tried to. You How tried... so? You said, I think you're lactose intolerant. And what does that have to do with poop? <laughs> Look at you, <laughs> sneaky. Um, okay. Uh, but I don't know if that's going to be next week's episode or at some point in our lives, we will do an episode that is clean well fine i want to be very clear to point out it was not my fault this week i know i know i know 
Okay. Hello. Great. All right. Good night. Good night.